welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Got a pretty interesting episode for you today. Going to switch it up a little bit. Um, we've been doing a ton of NBA content lately, but we know that football season is almost here. Uh, players are in their uh, last vacation time before camp start, both uh, pro and college. So we're going to start, you're going to start seeing more and more uh, football content here. So this episode today, we're going to talk some Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. Should be a good one. But before we do that, you know what time it is. If you haven't already, please go ahead, click that subscribe, that like, and that notification bell here on YouTube. It helps you uh, stay up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you're looking for the audio-only version of the podcast, please go ahead, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast. We should come up. If you enjoy the content, please make sure you give us that five-star review. Make sure you share the show with uh, everybody you know, friends, enemies, family, whoever. Anybody that wants to hear a uh, different voice in the sports media landscape, given a kind of different viewpoint on things. All right. You know what happens when you do that? Helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. Now let's get right to it. So um, I got a question for you to start. Have you ever seen a situation where two people or two things are almost exactly the same, but because one is in maybe a more advantageous situation, we view them totally differently? Like they're almost exactly the same, everything about them, but because one is in one place, we view it differently, right? We often talk about that with maybe the New York sports media. You got two players putting up the same numbers, but one might be in, I'm just going to pick a uh, Kansas City, right? No matter the sport, one could be in Kansas City, but one is in New York City and we see what happens. Here's an example. Jeremy Lin, anybody? We remember that? Those were like the biggest three weeks, arguably, in the history of the NBA, right? Crazy three-week stretch. Lynn Sanity. He comes out. He goes on a tear. Absolutely kills it. I think he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated magazine like twice. Yeah, I know. Magazines, right? <laughs> but anyway, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated like twice. Lynn Sanity was a huge deal. Got him some money. Got him uh, basically world-renowned. Why? Because he was in a Knicks uniform. He was in New York City, one of the biggest media markets on Earth, if not the biggest media market on Earth. So... We know that um, if he was in Sacramento or Indiana, it would have been a nice little story. It would have been a nice little run, but it wouldn't have been anything as compared to being in New York City. And why do I bring that up? Because today we're talking about Dak Prescott. And this is a guy who he's got it all. And when I say he's got it all, he's got it all. But the question is, does he deserve it? Dak Prescott at one time was the highest paid player in NFL history. When he signed his most recent extension with the Dallas Cowboys a couple of years ago, he signed a four year, $160 million deal with a $66 million signing bonus, an average salary of $40 million per year, 95 million guaranteed at signing and total guarantees of $126 million. That made him the highest paid guy. I think now he's like ninth highest paid. Um, on the list of players, or I guess on the list of quarterbacks. And that's interesting because um, I think after the 2024 season or after this season, he should be up for an extension. And that's kind of what what uh, brings me to do this episode. Just kind of listening to the usual preseason dribble when it comes to the NFL. How good can the Cowboys be? Can the Cowboys make a run? Can the Cowboys make the Super Bowl? How much pressure is on Dak Prescott? All this every single year. Cowboys, 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 right? Why do we do this? Because the Cowboys are super major media draw. They are the biggest name in the NFL. Facts. Um, this is a team that consistently gets numerous primetime games. This is a team that will also disappoint their fans every single season. Why? Because they haven't made a Super Bowl or a conference title game since 1995. And that's just what it is, right? So anyway, bringing this back around to Dak Prescott, the question we ask now is, why was he at one time the highest paid player in NFL history? See, this is where I disagree with this whole nonsensical NFL uh, premise, the way they pay guys based on who's up next. Don't agree with it because there's no reason that Dak Prescott should have ever been the highest paid player in NFL history. Just like Joe Flacco was at one point, right? Should anyone say he was? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a Ravens fan and I'm certainly glad that Joe Flacco had the statistically best, second best, excuse me, playoff run of any quarterback in NFL history in terms of um, uh, taking the Ravens to the uh, championship in 2013. They won a championship in 2013. That was at the end of the 2012 season. Um, an incredible, incredible season, right? But 
was he good enough to have been the highest paid player in the NFL at that time and thus the highest paid player in history? No, it, no one would say that. And I love what Joe Flacco did as the quarterback for the Ravens. That was great. But the fact is he was up next and of course he won a Super Bowl, but at least he won a Super Bowl, which is something a lot of quarterbacks better than him never did. Dan Marino, anybody? Warren Moon, anybody? Dan Fouts, anybody? You know, there, there's a bunch. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is Dak Prescott somehow managed to work his way into being the highest paid player. And the question now is, what did he do to deserve it? Okay, he got Offensive Rookie of the Year, but he got that on the back of Zeke. He got that on the back of Ezekiel Elliott. Ze uh, I believe Zeke rushed for over 1,600 yards as a rookie. So basically, all Dak had to do was turn around, hand it off to Zeke. Remember, eat, Zeke, eat. Hand it off to him, right? And then continue to move the ball down the field and don't turn it over. Which, by the way, I have no issue with. Y'all know if you watch this show, I'm a guy who loves the power run game. And I think it is clearly the best friend to a young quarterback, right? Keeps him from making mistakes. We saw the same thing with Russell Wilson early in his career. Marshawn Lynch, right? Turn around, hand it off to beach mode, rely on an outstanding defense. Cool. This is Dak Prescott. But he's not elite. He's not great. Dak Prescott is decent. That's what he is. I'm not going to go as far as LaShawn Shady McCoy and say he's ASS. I'm not going to say that, but... Dak Prescott is not elite. He's not great. He's decent. So let me ask you, if I said Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins, who would you tell me is better? Who would you tell me is better? Most people would say Dak Prescott. Why? Because of the programming of the star on his helmet, right? This gets back to the Jeremy Lin thing and playing in certain markets and being uh, a situation where you have two players or people that are almost exactly the same but because one is in a certain situation, we view them differently. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, how can you compare Dak to Kirk Cousins? Right. Dak has had outstanding situations for most of his career. Can't quite say that about Kirk Cousins, right? But let's 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 do this because we live in an era where stats are king, right? Stats are king. Now, we know that in the NFL, situations, coaching, weapons, all that, stats are really, really uh dependent on the situation you're in but this is what i want to show you um dak's been in the league seven years he's going into his eighth season what one two three four five six seven eight he's going into his ninth season okay dak's career record 61 and 36 now remember early in his career he had the dominant run game more recently in his career he's had dominant defenses for all of that dak has two playoff wins two two playoff wins in eight years. Okay, cool. Now, Dak Prescott's career completion percentage, 66.6, 6 didn't even notice that. 66.6, 166 touchdowns, touchdown percentage of 5.1, okay. 65 interceptions, interception percentage of 2.0, cool. All right, so Dak has a 66.6% .6 completion percentage, 166 touchdowns, 5.1 interception percent, touchdown percentage, and an interception percentage of 2.0. Cool. Now, let's look at Kirk Cousins, shall we? Kirk Cousins has been in the NFL 11 years, okay? Um, he's had, he's very accurate, doesn't make a lot of mistakes with the ball, but he's just good. He's not special. He's not elite. He's not great when it goes off script but he's a very solid NFL quarterback, but he's not a guy that's gonna take you there. And it's interesting, his completion percentage for his career, remember Dak 66.6, Kirk Cousins 66.8. Kirk Cousins, 252 career touchdowns. Now, big disparity there, remember, Kirk Cousins has been in the league uh, 11 years and Dak's been in the league for uh, eight years. Okay, cool. Touchdown percentage, remember, Dak. 5.1, Kirk Cousins, 5.2. Interceptions, Kirk Cousins, 105. Dak, 65. But let's look at the interception percentage. Dak Prescott, 2.0. Kirk Cousins, 2.2. Isn't this amazing? Yards passing per game. Dak Prescott, 257.1. Kirk Cousins, 261.5. Quarterback rating or... uh. Uh, passer rating, excuse me, 
Dak Prescott, 97.8. Kirk Cousins, you guessed it, 97.8. The reason I'm bringing this up, because every year we talk about what's Dak going to do? How much pressure is on Dak Prescott? Are the Cowboys going to do this? Are the Cowboys going to do that? Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott, Cowboys, Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Dak Prescott, right? We talk about all that. How much do we talk about Kirk Cousins? How much? When, in essence, they are the exact same NFL player. The exact same. But after this season, Dak's probably going to get another extension. Why? Because Jerry talks all that, but still doesn't seem to have figured out that you can't pay average guys superstar money. Now they're going to say, well, Dak is up next and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Stop that. Let Dak test the open market like you should have done all those years ago and let him find out that he's not worth what he thinks he is. Then he will come back to you, tail between his legs, because you think Dak doesn't understand all the off the field benefits that come with being the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Do you think that he gets away with the consistent playoff failures if he's playing for another team? Do you think that he's going to be in a situation for another team where the more he throws it as a quarterback, star quarterback, star, right? As the more he throws it as a star quarterback, the team is worse, but he's not going to get ripped apart for that. But he gets the benefit of that Cowboys umbrella. He gets the benefit of the Cowboys umbrella. I mean, that just is what it is. When you have that star on your helmet, people treat you differently. It is scary how almost identical Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott's career stats are other than Kirk Cousins have been being having been in the NFL for more than four for four more seasons. It's crazy. Dak has two playoff wins. Kirk Cousins has one, right? The beginning of Dak Prescott's career, Zeke literally, Zeke being Ezekiel Elliott, carried the team to success, right? In his first two years, uh, 2016, 2017, and then 2017, 2018, um, Ezekiel Elliott averaged 1,350 rushing yards and 9.3 touchdowns. That's going to help a whole lot in terms of making it easier on a young quarterback to stay ahead of the chains, right? It's going to make it a lot easier. Now, as Zeke has faded, Cowboys, not so good. A lot like another guy we know, Russell Westbrook, right? Uh, sorry, not Russell Westbrook, Russell Wilson when he was in Seattle. As the defense faded and the run game stopped being as dominant, Russell uh, Wilson suddenly wasn't quite the guy that we thought he was. And then he uh, he left for Denver and well, you know, you saw it, but that's a different show. Anyway, this is not how it's supposed to be. When you are getting better and more experienced in your career, now later on, you're making more money. You're the guy, you understand it. You're, you're prepared for the speed of the game. You're used to it. You're getting paid like a superstar. You're supposed to perform like a superstar. You are. As a young quarterback improves, the team is supposed to get better as well. See Joe Burrow, right? There is supposed to be less reliance on the running game, not more. And this is from a guy who loves to pound the football, loves old school physical run the football, right? Stop the run, run the ball, right? Key to success. Anyway, but that's not how it's supposed to be when you got a star quarterback. There we go again, star quarterback, right? Star on the helmet. Anyway, that's not how it's supposed to be when you're supposed to have that guy and you're paying him the money to perform like it but he's not. Dak simply is not a quarterback that can carry his team. So the question now becomes, why does he continue to get a pass? I mean, besides being the Cowboys quarterback, it's ridiculous. That should bring more pressure, more scrutiny. Somehow he gets away with it. Is it because when all this stuff was going down with Colin Kaepernick and the kneeling and whatnot, he refused to do it and he stood by Jerry Jones's side? Does that make it more palatable to middle America? And in all honesty, maybe white America, right? Because he wasn't willing to take that stand. Who knows that that may play a role, not saying it does, not saying it doesn't, but it may play a role. I mean, the question again is why does he keep getting a pass? So what I want to know from you is why do you think Dak Prescott keeps getting a pass? Why do you think that we don't talk about him in the exact same vein as Kirk Cousins when they are a, the exact same player? Why? Go ahead, leave your comments in the comment section. Definitely hope to uh, hear from you soon. I'll be back with you next episode, and I'm out. Peace.